Hi everyone, this is Optometrist Akhilesh Kumar. This time Optometry Academy welcomes you all with a new video on pupil examination. The pupil is not just a black hole inside your eye, it is a guide to your eye and brain health. The amount of light that enters your eyes is controlled by your pupils. So a comprehensive eye exam should include a test of the pupils. Pupil examination is an essential part of the eye exam and may reveal issues in your brain autonomic nervous system as well as your eye health. So let's start the topic after this short intro. What is the pupil? The pupil is a round black circle in the center of the iris. The pupil is a hole inside the eye that allows light to pass through to the light sensitive layer at the back of the eye, the retina. The pupil can contract to become smaller or to expand become larger. The amount of the light that reaches your retina is controlled by the size of the pupils which is controlled by the muscles in your iris that expand to external stimuli. The pupil constrict in bright light to minimize the amount of light entering the eye. The pupil dilate in dark or dim light to allow more light into the eye and improve vision. Pupil examination the eye doctor will include the assessment of your pupils as a part of a comprehensive eye exam. The first thing an eye doctor looks for when examining your pupil is anisocoria, a condition where one pupil is larger than the other. In addition to checking whether the pupils are equal in size, an eye doctor will examine the size and shape of the pupils in both bright and dim light. Other tests conducted by an eye doctor are the speed and quality of the pupillary responses to stimuli and your pupillary reaction to near stimuli such as small print. Types of pupil test. There are three procedures that eye doctor use to test pupil reflexes. Light response pupil test. The light response pupil test evaluates the reflex that regulates the pupil size in reaction to light. After dimming the lights, the doctor will ask you to look at a distant object. A beam of light will shine into your eyes from either side. Your doctor will examine the pupils closely to see if they constrict in reaction to light, noting their size and shape. Swinging flashlight pupil test. The swinging flashlight pupil test compares the response of your pupils to light. The light in the room will be dimmed and again you will be asked to look at a far away object. The eye doctor will swing the light from one eye to the other in a rhythmic motion, recording the responses of each pupil. When the light is shown on your pupil, they should constrict or remain the same size. An abnormal pupil response such as the pupil dilatation following introduction of light stimulus is known as Marcus gun pupil or an afferent pupillary defect. This condition may indicate a more serious condition caused by an optic nerve or neurological issue. Near response pupil test. This test is performed in a room with normal lighting. Your healthcare provider asks you to look at a distant object, moves a small object or a card in front of your eyes. Your healthcare provider watches your pupils closely to make sure they constrict quickly as your fixation changes from far to near. Abnormal pupillary responses Anisocoria It refers to the asymmetric sizes of the pupils. Physiologic anisocoria is very common and a normal variant in up to 20% of the population. The variation should not be more than 1 mm and both eyes should react to light normally. Relative afferent pupillary defect RAPD an RAPD is a defect in the direct response. It is due to damage in optic nerve or severe retinal disease. It is important to be able to differentiate whether a patient is complaining of decreased vision from an ocular problem such as cataract or from a defect of the optic nerve. If an optic nerve lesion is present, the affected pupil will not constrict to light when light is shown in that pupil during the swinging flashlight test. However, it will constrict if light is shown in the other eye. The swinging flashlight test is helpful in separating these two etiologies as only patient with optic nerve damage will have a positive RAPD. Some causes of RAPD include optic neuritis, ischemic optic disease or retinal disease, 
severe glaucoma causing trauma to optic nerve direct optic nerve damage retinal detachment very severe macular degeneration retinal infection adis pupil common in women in the third fourth decade of life but also can be present in men either no or sluggish responses to light both direct and consensual responses thought to be caused from denervation in the postganglionic parasympathetic nerve associated with holmes adis syndrome described with adis pupil and absent deep tendons reflexes overall this is a benign process argil robertson pupil this lesion is a hallmark of tertiary neurosyphilis pupils will not constrict to light but they will constrict with accommodation pupils are small at baseline and usually both involved horner syndrome loss of sympathetic innervation causing the clinical triad of ptosis drooping eyelid the superior tarsal muscle requires sympathetic innervation to keep the eyelid retracted myosis pupillary constriction a loss of sympathetic input causes unopposed parasympathetic stimulation which lead to pupillary constriction this degree of myosis may be subtle and require a dark room anhidrosis decreased sweating also caused by loss of sympathetic activity the pattern of anhidrosis may help identify the lesion anhidrosis of the entire face is often associated with a lesion at the level of the carotid artery causes of horner syndrome include carotid artery dissection pancos tumor neuropharyngeal tumors lymphoproliferative disorders brachial plexus injury cavernous sinus thrombosis fibromuscular dysplasia that's all from this topic kindly subscribe the channel and press the bell icon thank you for watching